Hi everyone, uh, this is the third and final part of our mini-series called The Shape of Space, which I really should have called The Shape of Space-Time. But this is the factor, the only factor really, that is going to determine the future of the universe, the fate of the universe. And in this third episode, I want to talk specifically about a fairly recent discovery that shocked the scientific world, the discovery of dark energy. We don't even know what it is yet, but it makes up apparently two-thirds of the contents of the universe. You can imagine it has a huge e effect on uh, the shape of space and the eventual outcome of the universe in which we live. So let's bring this story of the shape of space up to date by looking at dark energy and the implications of this amazing discovery. Let's discover the maths. <laughs> In 1997, two teams of astronomers used the Hubble Space Telescope and ground-based telescopes to make observations of what are called Type 1a supernovae. These are explosions of white dwarfs that have acquired fresh material from a companion star until they reach a critical mass at which a runaway nuclear detonation takes place. The extreme brilliance of the explosions, briefly exceeding that of an entire galaxy, combined with the fact that the rate at which they brighten gives a measure of their true brightness, make Type 1a supernovae highly effective yardsticks for measuring the distance to remote galaxies. As well as this, how much the light from these supernovae is shifted to longer wavelengths, known as the redshift, tells us how fast their host galaxies are moving away from us. Taken together, the distance and recession speeds of Type 1a explosions serve as an accurate gauge of the rate of expansion of the universe in different cosmic eras. The two teams of researchers were aiming to shed further light on the question of whether the universe is open or closed. In either case, they expected to find that the rate of cosmic expansion today is less than it had been in the remote past. Instead, their observations showed something astounding. The rate of expansion over time has increased. The galaxies are rushing apart faster today than they were billions of years ago. Evidently, gravity is not the only force at work on a cosmic scale. Something is opposing it, a kind of anti-gravity effect, pulling the universe apart faster and faster as time goes on. No one knew what this totally unexpected phenomenon might be, but a name for it quickly emerged, dark energy. Calculations soon revealed the extent to which we'd underestimated how much stuff, total mass plus energy, there is in the universe. Based on recent observations by Planck, a European space agency mission, only 4.9% of the mass energy content of the universe consists of ordinary matter. A further 26.8% is in the form of dark matter, and the rest, 68.3%, is dark energy. Embarrassingly, scientists find themselves in the position of not knowing what 95% of the universe is made of. What they've gleaned, however, is that dark energy isn't just out there. It's all around us, an evenly spread, homogeneous property of the space in which we live. In a sense, it even permeates our bodies and everything we see or touch. Because it's a form of energy, it has a mass equivalence given by Einstein's famous equation, e equals mc squared. In these terms, its density seems extraordinarily low, about 6.9 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms per cubic meter. That's a lot less than the average density of ordinary matter in the Milky Way galaxy, but remember, Dark energy exists in every corner of space with the same density, whereas ordinary matter occurs for the most part in relatively tiny chunks, galaxies, so that cosmos-wide, dark energy is much more dense than the kind of mass or energy we can see. Although scientists don't know what dark energy is, they're confident that it doesn't violate any of the known laws of physics. Its presence is allowed, for instance, by Einstein's general theory of relativity. In fact, one of the theories put forward to explain dark energy is an updated version of the cosmological constant that Einstein proposed. 
Unlike Einstein's famous fudge factor, however, which was introduced artificially to give a static solution to the field equations of general relativity, dark energy doesn't balance the effects of gravity. On the contrary, it acts as an increasingly strong negative pressure that causes the universe to expand at an increasing rate. An alternative explanation for dark energy is that it takes the form of a low energy field which came into being at the same time as a hugely significant event that happened just moments after the universe sparked into existence. Most cosmologists now accept that a split second after its birth, the universe underwent a brief but stupendously rapid period of expansion known as inflation within a sliver of time lasting from about a trillion trillion trillionth of a second to somewhere between a billion trillion trillionth and a hundred million trillion trillionth of a second, the universe swelled in size by a factor of 100 trillion 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 trillion. That's 10 to the 50, give or take a few zeros. An important effect of this sudden monstrous ballooning of space and everything in it was to magnify the tiniest of primordial fluctuations, way smaller than the size of a proton, to large-scale dimensions. At the end of the inflationary epoch, so the theory goes, there would have been differences in the density of matter from place to place that were sufficiently large to serve as seeds for the future growth of galaxies. At first glance, inflation and dark energy appear very different. Inflation was already ancient history by the time the universe was a microsecond old, whereas dark energy operates over timescales of billions of years. The expansion rate of the universe during inflation was 10 to the 50 times what it is today, whereas just 70% of the current rate it's estimated is due to dark energy. The early kind of cosmic expansion caused by inflation and the late kind caused mainly by dark energy differ a lot in detail, but they're similar in other respects. Both involve exponential expansion, albeit over vastly disparate lengths of time. Both have identical relationships in general relativity between the energy and the pressure to which they give rise, and for both, the relationship between time and the universe's scale is the same. These similarities have encouraged some physicists to suggest that the fields behind inflation and dark energy are tied together by something called quintessence, after the old name for a fifth classical element. The big difference between the cosmological constant idea of dark energy and the various models involving quintessence is their behavior over time. The former is static, the latter are dynamic. One of the great challenges of 21st century physics is to determine the nature of dark energy and thereby learn the ultimate fate of the universe. Depending on which model of dark energy eventually proves correct, the universe may expand forever at an exponential rate, eventually collapse as a big crunch, or, in a version of quintessence known as phantom energy, expand at a rate faster than exponential, and in the remote future end in a catastrophe known unsettlingly as the Big Rip. At present, observations strongly suggest that the universe will continue expanding forever. The main uncertainty is the rate. As far as scientists can tell, the expansion of the universe started to accelerate due to the effects of dark energy about 6 billion years ago. However, we're still in a relatively early cosmic phase before the expansion caused by dark energy becomes so extreme that other galaxies or their burned out remains are born far out of sight and the material contents of space are spread out faster and faster into a desperately thin gruel of subatomic particles, each separated by a mind-bogglingly huge distance from its nearest neighbours. As for the overall shape of the universe, cosmologists draw a distinction between the observable universe and the global universe. The observable universe is the part we can, in principle, see, the part from which light has had chance to reach us since the Big Bang. It's a bubble of space centred on Earth that's reckoned to be about 46.5 billion light-years in radius. This is much greater than the distance of the most remote objects known, those that existed shortly after the Big Bang, because space itself has expanded in the 13.8 billion years since the universe was formed. 
the latest measurements such as those by the Baryon Oscillation Spectroscopic Survey or BOSS telescope suggest that the observable universe is exactly or almost exactly flat the 3D equivalent of a Euclidean plane in which parallel lines never meet. Beyond the margins of the observable universe lies the global universe, the entire extent of the space-time that's connected with the part in which we find ourselves. On a global scale, the universe may look different from the local part we see. On the other hand, it too may be flat. Even if it's geometrically flat, however, it may be folded, connected, or twisted in different ways to yield a variety of distinctive topologies. Think about a sheet of paper. Although flat, it may be folded and joined at two of its edges to make a cylinder, twisted and joined at two edges to give a Mobius band, or bent around from a cylindrical form to make a torus, a donut shape. In the case of a universe that's flat in 3D, a so-called Euclidean 3-manifold, there are many more topological options. In 1934, Swiss mineralogist and crystallographer Werner Nowaki proved that there are exactly 18 different Euclidean 3-manifolds. If our universe were globally flat then, as currently seems most likely, its topology would have to correspond to one of these types. Although they're all mathematically possible, eight are thought to be physically improbable because they're non-orientable. They contain orientation-reversing loops. If the universe were one of these oddball shapes, you could in principle travel all the way around it and return with everything in your body swapped around right for left. More to the point, a non-orientable topology would have observational consequences that haven't so far been seen. Some of the ten other shapes, such as the one-third twist hexagonal space and the double cube space or Hansch-Vent manifold, might also seem exotic, but none can be ruled out at this stage. In fact, although the observable universe seems to be exactly flat, and there's a good chance that it continues to be flat beyond where we can see, the global universe might have a hyperbolic or a spherical curvature, vastly increasing the range of possible topologies. A favourite question of adults and children alike is, what's outside the universe? The simple but not very satisfying answer is that there doesn't have to be an outside, just because we can't imagine a space that doesn't have anything surrounding it and anything to expand into doesn't mean that it's impossible. It's perfectly feasible, both mathematically and physically, that all the space there is might be contained within the universe. According to some theories, including that of the multiverse, there may be other regions of space-time separate from our own. But even if these other universes exist, they're independent from our own and not some larger space in which our own is embedded.